हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज दलित सोनी एंड यू आर वाचिंग टारगेट यूपीएससी प्रीलिम्स 2024 बाय दृष्टि आईएएस इन दिस इनिशिएटिव वी हैव कम अप विद टू काइंड ऑफ मॉड्यूल्स वन इज रिलेटेड टू योर करंट अफेयर्स एंड सेकंड इज रिलेटेड टू योर एमसीक्यू प्रैक्टिस सो इन टुडेस वीडियो वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग सम करंट अफेयर्स फ्रॉम आईआरएस पर्सपेक्टिव वी हैव कम अप विद टू मोर एपिसोड्स एंड दिस इज द थर्ड एपिसोड ऑफ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस सो इफ यू हैव नॉट वॉच दिस एपिसोड सो यू कैन गो एंड वॉच दिस एपिसोड एंड देन कंटिन्यू योर प्रिपरेशन फॉर प्रीलिम्स ओके so let's start with the today's episode we'll be discussing some uh, current affairs related to international relations so let's see so first would be related to your brics summit which has happened in johannesburg that is your 15th brics summit okay it has happened in johannesburg and now why this particular summit is important because it has added or you can say or you can say this particular grouping has expanded its membership to six more countries okay now these six more countries are basically your iran saudi arabia uae okay egypt ethiopia and argentina so you have seen that they have taken some countries from your uh, west asia and then some from african continent and uh, one country from latin america okay so they have actually uh, expanded their horizon over here and why uh, all these things are happening because there is uh, you know certain things which are going on in the geopolitical perspective you know that there are certain areas when we are talking about west asia that is important from the point of view of uh, investment from, from the point of view of the access to european countries so this area becomes important okay uh, when we are talking about the other countries which has seen or taken interest nearly 40 countries has taken interest in joining this particular uh, forum so basically you can understand the importance of this particular brics that is brics okay so when we are talking about this brics this has started actually uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, the inception of this particular grouping so in 1990s or before there was this uh, ric axis or you can say russia india china axis okay so these countries were quite close at that back then uh, when we are talking about russia and india russia has always been a good friend of india okay and uh, that is why and that that point of time russia was quite close to china as well no doubt they are both competitive countries but still uh since china was rising at that point of time and india and russia was also actually uh, having some inclination to each other then in 2001 after the fall of uh, you can say uh, ussr okay so this particular 2001 uh, there was this particular scholar that is jim o'neil he has come up with the idea of bric that is brazil russia india china now he has considered that these are good destination for investment or you can say these are basically your emerging economies at that point of time okay so the idea of bric came from that particular place and then in 2006 basically they have formally started meeting okay and then this meeting has continuously been happening after 2009 okay but formally we can say that this particular institution bric came into picture in 2006 okay after that in 2010 there uh, there is another a uh, country that is basically your south africa south africa joined in 2010 and after that particular point you can say that this present form that is brics brics has come into picture and acronym became brics okay so that is the history of brics now let's see about something about this particular organization which we have already discussed as i told you there are five members that is brazil russia india china south africa so these are important for you then coming to the uh, uh, inception you can say 2001 british economist that is jim o'neil he has coined the term bric as these are some emerging economies that is brazil india uh, brazil russia india and china okay and this was formalized in 2006 basically uh, there was this foreign ministers uh, meeting over there it was formalized and then 2010 the south africa actually joined the uh, particular forum and in since 2009 they are going for the meeting okay so that is about brics here you can see Uh, when we are talking about the five members uh, the original five members they are representing a nearly 41% of the global population 24% of the global gdp and 16% of the global trade and now we have expanded it from the johannesburg declaration as i told you it has happened in the 15th of 15th brick summit okay and after this particular summit these six countries has joined that is argentina india sorry argentina Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, and UAE. Okay, 
so they are formal members from the 1st january 2024 okay but this particular declaration came in 2023 okay now i hope this is clear now brics has actually expanded its horizons because uh, there are certain aspect related to it like first is china's strategic move for influence around the world china is trying to create an alternative infrastructure you can say that is <coughs> When we are talking about the international bodies, they are mostly Western dominated or West dominated, and China is trying to create its own, you can say, sphere of influence. And that is why uh, this country is going for the alternative infrastructure. And for that, this BRICS is basically very important for China. So this is a strategic move by China. Second thing is to enhance cooperation with similarly aligned countries for a common objective. Okay. Then limited options within the alternative coalition. As I told you, China is going for the alternative coalition, and BRICS is one of them because other uh, options are very limited. Then anti-West sentiments and the solidarity among the countries in the global south. Okay. Now here one thing is that anti-West sentiments. When we are talking about India, India is particularly not anti-West, but there are certain things when we are talking about uh, reforms in WTO, reforms in UN, etc. So. India, uh, in that regard, we can say that there is a grouping which is representing the global south and they are wanting certain change in the international structure. Okay. How can India use the BRICS platform? Here you can say adopting a global governance philosophy to support universal scrutiny and then there is this uh, universal security and then ensuring uh, economic contribution. Ob obviously, because it is nearly you know, 24 percent of the GDP it was and now six more countries has joined. You can say definitely it will increase. So that is about your economic uh, cooperation, security cooperation, etc. Okay, so that is why uh, we can say that BRICS is basically expanded recently. Okay, now these this is your Russia, this is China, India, South Africa, and then we have this Brazil. Okay, these were the old members. Okay, now new members has joined. That is your Egypt. Then we have. Saudi Arabia, we have UAE, we have Iran, we have Ethiopia, okay, and then we have Argentina, okay. So these are the countries which has been actually uh, added recently, okay. So you can see the earlier this particular uh, grouping was uh, very limited and now it has expanded worldwide. Second thing is nearly 40 countries are even more interested to join this particular grouping because uh, of the significance it holds for the global south. Okay, so that is about BRICS. Now moving further, we have this uh, uh, Kachatibu controversy. Okay, so Kachatibu is basically an island uh, near Park Street. You must have heard about this Park Street. Okay, or you can say near Rameshwaram. Okay. So in that particular, you know, maritime uh, area that is uh, your between Sri Lanka and Tamil Nadu, we have this particular small island that is Kachatibu, and it was in recently uh, it was in news because of the political discourse. Uh, recently, our prime minister, or you can say the government, said that they are trying to bring it back because this island was given to Sri Lanka in 1974 by the then government, or you can say that time PM was Indira Gandhi. Okay. So there was this particular agreement between these two countries wherein this uh, Kachatibu island was given to the Sri Lanka. Okay. Now, other than that, there was another agreement in uh, 1976 which says that there was uh, some settlement related to EEZ and one area that is known as Wedge Bank. Wedge Bank on this particular area, exclusive economic rights has been given to India by Sri Lanka. Okay. So that was the thing which has happened. So let's see what is the controversy and why this was in, uh, you know, uh, your current affairs and we will see the location of this particular area okay recently kachatibu located in park street between india and sri lanka remained in the headlines due to the disputes the kachatibu issue concerned the rights of possession and use of the uninhabited island of kachatibu this is not an inhabited island but it is a remote island you can say okay in 1974 kachatibu was recognized as part of sri lankan jurisdiction under an agreement between prime minister of india and sri lanka thereby changing the authority as i told you 1974 was the year uh, before that it was uh, in the you can say authority of india and then the jurisdiction was changed to sri lanka okay however the agreement allowed indian fishermen to continue fishing in the surrounding waters dried their nest in the island and allowed indian pilgrims to visit catholic shrines there okay so there were certain you can say uh, relaxations which were given to indian people over there 
but recently there was news that these people or these fishermen has been ar arrested in that particular area that is why this particular controversy has come up come back in the news okay so these are certain relaxation which was given to the indian fishermen etc and the communities which wanted to visit the catholic shrine over there okay now here, despite the reproachment by fishermen from both the countries, the supplementary agreement in 1976, okay, that was there was the supplementary agreement, okay, defined maritime boundary and the exclusive economic zone, banning the fishing activities without express permission. So, in that particular agreement, these fishing activities cannot be done without any express permission over there, okay. So, that is one thing, and because of which these uh, recent issues has been in use. Okay, then now Katsatavu as a glance, if you see, it is an area of 285 acres. Uh, you don't have to remember this particular data. Okay, it is 30 kilometers from the Rameshwaram uh, to the southern tip of India. Okay, uh, the island was mainly a fishing point. So, fishermen from both the countries uh, kept using it. Both countries continued to administer the island up till that is 1974 before it came under the authority of Sri Lanka, which I have already told you. Now, coming to the location of this particular island, here you can see this is your Tamil Nadu area and this is your Sri Lanka and this is Park State area and now here you can see this particular place is basically your Kachatiu Island, okay. And when I am telling you this was given to, uh, you can say Sri Lanka in 1974, there was one place near Kanyakumari here, there is this uh, place called Wedge Bank, okay. And this particular bank, a uh, Wedge Bank has the, or you can say India has the authority or the EEZ of this particular area. And this particular area is basically resource rich area. So, that is why it is quite important for India because it is having a lot of resources over there, okay. So, that is basically your, uh, you know, you can say controversy which is related to your Kachatiu. So, please remember the name of the island. Other than that, when we are talking about the Sri Lanka, there has, they have started this, uh, you know, ferry service. So, please go ahead and uh, see which ferry service has been started, okay. So, they have started from the Kakhe Santurai, okay. So, please go it, uh, go and uh, check which ferry services has been started or resumed between uh, India and Sri Lanka recently, okay. So, that is about this thing. Other than that, there is one more place that is uh, India is uh, developing a port in Sri Lanka. Please note that uh, name of the port. Other than that, there is another, uh, you can say port that is Hammandota. Hammandota. This Hammandota port has been in the, you can say, China, China has taken this port on lease of 1990 year, sorry, 99 years, okay. So, that is uh, one cause of concern for India, okay. And India is trying to build this Colombo port in Sri Lanka, okay. Now, this is about Sri Lanka and India. Now, we can move further with the next article that is related to your Black Sea Grain Deal, okay. So, when we are talking about this Black Sea Grain Deal, so basically, this is a deal between Russia and Ukraine. Okay, so in you know that in February 2022, Russia has gone for the you can say some area that ha they have captured or you can say Russia has attacked Ukraine. Okay, in Feb 2022, and because of that particular attack, what happened that uh, the exports from the Ukraine, okay, that has stopped or you can say that that was hindered. Okay, now the problem is Ukraine is a you can say bread basket of this particular area. Why bread basket? Because Ukraine has a lot of, uh, you know, fertile land and they are going for the agriculture over there and they, uh, when we are talking about wheat, when we are talking about the uh, maize, rapeseed, etc., all these uh, things, Ukraine is uh, quite capable of exporting this particular thing. And other than that, Ukraine has a strategic location from where it can access to the Black Sea and ultimately it can access to the, you can say, those uh, grain importing countries of uh, Northern Africa, West Asia, Russia, etc. Okay. So, since there was this attack which has been done by Russia on Ukraine and because of which this particular export has been hindered and considering that in July 2022, there was this uh, deal uh, that has been signed that is basically your Black Sea Grain deal which was signed between Russia and Ukraine, okay, and it was brokered by United Nations, okay. So, because of which it was said that the uh, Russia or uh, they will allow to go for uh, you can say export from three particular ports of Ukraine, okay. So, the supply chain will be continuously maintained, okay. So, that was basically idea behind this Black Sea Grain Deal. But recently it was in news because it has uh, you know been uh, effective till 2023. It was supposed to be renewed but uh, actually Russia did not renew it, okay. 
तो टर्की हैज गॉन टू रशिया एंड टर्की हैज एक्चुअली ट्राई टू रिवाइव दिस पर्टिकुलर डील सो लेट्स सी तो वाइट वॉज इन डिस्कशन बिकॉज लास्ट ईयर टर्किश प्रेसिडेंट मेट रशियन प्रेसिडेंट टू रिवाइव द ब्लैक सी ग्रेन डील विच रशिया हैज विद्रॉन फ्रॉम इन जुलाई ट्वेंटी ओके सो फ्रॉम जुलाई ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी इट वॉज इन इफेक्ट एंड देन रशिया विद्रॉन फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर डील ओके Black Sea Grain Initiative. The Black Sea Grain Initiative aims to address the rising food prices resulting from the supply chain disruption caused by Russian actions in the global bread basket. Okay, this global bread basket is basically your Ukraine. Okay, and Russian action they are talking about the war which has been waged by Russia, or you can say attack which has been done by Russia on Ukraine. Okay, this agreement was signed in July 2022 under the mediation of UN in Istanbul. This initiative allows commercial food and fertilizer exports exclusively from the three major Ukrainian ports in the Black Sea, that is Odessa, uh, that is uh, Kronomos, and Yuhni. Okay, so these are three ports which you can remember. Please remember the name of these ports because UPSC has this tendency to ask the important ports, etc., and their location. Okay, so please remember these three ports, that is in Ukraine. Okay. and this black sea grain deal is related to access to this port so that export of fertilizer and the food can be done to ensure the uh, you know uh, food security and the supply chain uh, in that particular area okay so that was the deal now here you can say what is the importance of this particular deal ukraine is one of the largest exporter of your wheat corn rape seed sunflower seed and sunflower oil globally okay access to black sea enables it to have direct link with the grain importers that is in middle east north african country to russia and europe the agreement facilitated nearly safe export of approximately 33 million ton of the grains and other commodities okay so that is why it, this particular deal was important for the food security okay uh, for various nations which are basically import dependent okay so uh, in that particular nations the northern part of africa some part of europe and russia and you can say the middle east countries these are basically affected by this particular deal okay now here you can see uh, when we are talking about this particular area there are certain things which we you can remember uh, first is related to your black sea okay what well, then this is ukraine now we are talking about some ports on this particular area okay this is crimea this crimea was annexed by russia in 2014 after which uh, there was many you can say uh, sanctions which has been imposed on russia okay now here you can see there is this sea of azov between crimea and russia okay this sea of azov is nothing but the extension of black sea in the northern direction there is this particular place or you can say this strait is there that is your strait of kerch okay kerch strait or there is this bridge that is kerch bridge as well okay so that is very important location for you so that is one thing related to your crimea and russia okay other than that when we see Uh, this black sea ukraine has uh, access to black sea and hence it will have access to mediterranean and here we have the north african countries okay then from here if we come to this part this is the west asia's part and where can you can say that it is, has access to that as well other than that in russia and europe they have this uh, you know importing uh, they import grains from ukraine okay so ukraine is basically your global bread basket so that is one thing you can remember other than that when we are looking at this particular extension of black sea or you can say black sea is basically extension of mediterranean sea and here we have aegean sea okay and this is basically your dardanelles and this is bosphorus strait okay so please remember uh, these locations that is your aegean sea bosphorus strait dardanelles sea of marmara and here we have mediterranean sea we have sea of azov we have kerch strait all these areas are very much important from your black sea's point of view as well as this particular deal okay i have mentioned all these areas here the name of areas like as i told you the bordering countries of black sea here you can see that as well i must have so here when we are looking at the black sea these are the bordering countries that is first turkey then georgia russia then we have ukraine then we have romania and bulgaria okay so these are the countries which are basically having a boundary with black sea okay so here you can see ukraine russia georgia turkey or turkey bulgaria and romania okay it is also known as aegean sea okay so please you can remember that and then it is bounded by the pontic mountains in the south caucasus mountain in the east and the crimean mountains in the north okay now turkish strait system is there that is dardanelles bosphorus sea of marmara which we have already seen these are forming a transition zone between the mediterranean and the black sea here we have seen 
this is basically a transition zone uh, between Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea that is Bosphorus Strait, Aegean Sea, Dardanellus and then this Sea of Marmara. This is basically the transition system. Okay. Now, all these things are clear. We have seen the Sea of Azov and the Third Strait. Okay. Now, we can move further. Now, we will talk about European Sky Shield Initiative. So, basically, this is something to do with the defense uh, security, defense and security. Okay. So, there are few countries which has joined this particular initiative. This initiative here you can see that uh, European Sky Shield Initiative for Air Defense in response to Russia's attack on Ukraine. So, after this Russia, Russian uh, attack on Ukraine in 2022, February 2022, they have come together and they have formed an alliance or you can say a collective security alliance wherein they are uh, going for the air defense. Okay. Now, Austria and Switzerland has joined this particular initiative and why it is important for uh, us to know that uh, why this Austria and Switzerland is important for this particular thing is that Austria, oh, sorry, Austria and Switzerland, these two countries has been traditionally neutral, okay. They have not been part of any particular block, you can say and recently when it has happened, now they are concerned about their own security in that particular area because Russia in 2014, uh, you can say, annexed the Crimea part and later they have annexed or they are trying to you know attack on the Ukraine and there are chances that they might even further go along with that particular direction okay so that is why the countries in the vicinity are quite concerned about their own safety and that is why they have joined this particular initiative though they have been traditionally neutral okay so Austria and Switzerland has joined there are countries like uh, Greece and Turkey they might be joining in the uh, you know anytime soon okay so coming up, uh, again here you can see about ESSI, if we say European Sky Shield Initiative is a regional grouping of uh, European countries that aims to develop a common air defense or you can say common air and missile defense system. Okay. It focuses on the collectively acquiring air defense equipment, uh, missiles that strengthens NATO's integrated air and missile defense. Okay. So, ultimately, they will be, you can say, strengthening the NATO's uh, defense system which is placed in that particular area. Okay. We have already talked about NATO in our previous lectures. So, you can go through it and watch okay now when we are talking about essi there are 19 members okay and germany is basically leading it in 2022 okay now here you can see uh, these are the members which are over here okay this is the location of your switzerland and austria which has recently joined here you can see this is uh, here we have russia okay russia has actually taken this crimea in 2014 they have attacked in Ukraine in 2022. Now, these countries here, they are basically part of this ESSI initiative because they are concerned about their safety. Next is Romania, Bulgaria and then uh, Slovakia, Hung Hungary, uh, Czech and this is Austria and Switzerland. Okay. So, there are uh, speculations that Turkey and Greece might join. Okay. So, that is about ESSI. Now, we can move further with uh, CPTTP that is your, uh, you can say comprehensive and progressive agreement for the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Okay. When we are talking about this Trans-Pacific Partnership, it was originated in, you can say, 2016 somewhere, okay. But then, USA basically backed out, USA withdrawal because of the Trump regime, they were not supportive of it and they withdraw it and that is why this particular initiative never came into picture, okay. But then, in 2017, these countries, other countries, they have under the leadership of Japan, they have thought of reviving it again and in 2018, they basically started with this particular alliance that is basically your comprehensive and progressive agreement for trans-pacific partnership okay now it is in news because recently united kingdom has joined it okay they have actually signed it and uh, it is yet to be ratified but they have uh, signed it okay now uk's prime minister said that it is a success of uh, you can say it cited the success of agreement as an example of post brexit freedom okay so, after Brexit, they are seeing it as a important success because they are joining another, uh, you can say, grouping for their economic gains, okay. Now, the agreement will now need to be ratified by the Westminster, that is the, uh, you can say, uh, uh, legislature of your UK and then each uh, CPTPP, uh, your countries, all the members countries will also ratify it, then UK will also ratify it, after that it will become a member, okay. Now, uh, CPTPP is a free trade agreement between Austria, Australia, Brunei, uh, Darussalam, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Mexico, Peru, New Zealand, Singapore and Vietnam. Okay, so there are some countries which we will see on the map. Basically, these countries are, uh, you know, part of your Pacific area. 
okay but now uk is uh, you can say they have joined it in this particular initiative here you can see uh, when we are talking about this particular initiative there are 11 countries which are part of it and it has started in 2018 as i told you uh, 2017 they came together and they have thought of reviving this particular tpp and they have come up with a new name and they revived it under the leadership of japan okay now 11 countries of uh, cptpp are members of asia pacific economic cooperation so that is another point they are also member member of this particular apec and india is not part of it okay india did not join this particular initiative importance of this particular uh, grouping is that 99 percent of the tariffs on the goods and services are basically re uh, removed okay so you can say uh, technically it is kind of a free trade agreement only okay now it prevents abuse of environment they have this particular angle of environment attached to it they are going for the you know unsustainable uh, logging and fishing etc has to be stopped okay so they have element of environment attached to it so next time if they ask you in the examination don't only think that it is just a uh, economic alliance it is uh, also having environmental anger countries that do not comply with uh, this particular uh, you know provisions they will face trade tariffs okay so that is about this uh, cptpp and here are the member countries okay so when we are talking about as i told you this is the pacific area here you can say this is your pacific ocean okay and we have these countries that is your canada we have mexico mexico or mexico okay then we have uh, chile and peru we have new zealand we have australia here we have vietnam we have uh, uh, malaysia and singapore we have uh, brunei jerusalem and then japan okay other than that uk has signed it and they are yet to ratify it okay so there are uh, right now there are 11 members which name are given over here you can give it a look okay now we can move further which is basically india united arab emirates relations okay this particular two countries has been in news recently because of various reasons or you can say various uh, uh, when we are talking about this middle east or in the west asia this particular uh, you can say reason has been in news because of various uh, activities which are happening over there we have uh, seen it for the israel hamas issues then we have seen it for the houthi rebels causing uh, chaos in the red sea then recently there are attacks on iran etc so all these things make, make sure that this reason itself is very much important okay so why it is in discussion because india and uae has signed various uh, agreements to increase the cooperation in the arenas like investment electricity trade and then digital payment platforms so most important is that this digital payment platforms herein these two countries has gone for the interlinking of the digital payment platform when we are talking about india we have upi and then when we are talking about uae they have aani okay so they have gone for the integration of or interlinking of these two platforms so that there can be seamless cross border transactions okay so when we are talking about the import export when we are talking about the tourism when we are talking about the any kind of economic trade this particular uh, things will facilitate it okay now thereby enhancing the financial connectivity and the cooperation okay now it will interconnect the domestic debit card or credit card like rupee in india and jaiwan in uae okay so basically they are trying to connect these two countries financially so that the transactions can happen smoothly okay and second thing is we have this tourism sector we have education we have medical all these things are integrated with uh, these two countries so that is why this uh, initiative will be quite fruitful okay now moving ahead there are another uh, you know angles related to it we have also signed a bilateral investment treaty ultimately by the name of it you can say that it is investment treaty and uh, uae has committed to invest uh, 75 billion us dollars in india uh, in infrastructure sector okay when we are talking about uh, uae's contribution it is the fourth largest foreign direct investment uh, investor in india okay now intergovernment framework for agreement on india middle east economic corridor this imec is very important it was actually uh, the idea was mooted in g20 summit under india's presidency okay and this is about the cooperation and the connectivity project you can say here we can see in the you know uh, this particular slide over here here you can see from india then uae then saudi arabia there are certain four uh, you know areas which it will be connecting and then ultimately from israel haifa port and then to uh, greece that is basically your europe okay so from india the middle east and then europe so that is basically a connectivity project okay other than that if we see 
कल्चरल कोऑपरेशन इज देयर प्रोटोकॉल फॉर कोऑपरेशन बिटवीन द नेशनल आर्काइव ओके एंड दैट इज वन थिंग अदर देन दैट दे हैव ऑल्सो गॉन फॉर द कोलेबरेटिंग ऑन द नेशनल मेरी टाइम हेरिटेज कॉम्प्लेक्स एट लोथल ओके नाउ दिस बिकम्स इवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज लोथल इज यू नो दैट हरप्पन साइट इट इज अ हरप्पन और यू कैन से आईबीसी इंडियन वैली सिविलाइजेशन ऑफ द हरप्पन साइट ओके सो दैट इज वाई इट बिकम्स इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दे कैन आस्क यू इन द आर्ट एंड कल्चर एज वेल ओके सो दैट इज वाई प्लीज रिमेम्बर दैट लोथल वॉज इन न्यूज ओके नाउ पोर्ट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट सो दी कंपनीज ऑफ दीज टू कंट्रीज विल गो फॉर द इनहेंस पोर्ट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड कनेक्टिविटी बिटवीन दिस इंडिया एंड यू ए ओके सो हियर यू कैन सी दिस इज बेसिकली द ब्रॉड एरिया दिस इज यू ए हो ओके एंड वेन वी आर दिस इज द एरिया ऑफ यू ए ओके now one more thing i would like to tell you over here is that this particular small tip here that is basically part of your oman okay so if someone ask uh, oman has direct access to state of hormuz so you can say yes okay so oman has this uh, small tip over here okay then this is basically part of your uae okay and uh, this is persian gulf and this is your uh, 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 area where in uh, this area of you know somalia coast there was piracy activities which has been in news this is red sea and in this particular area houthi rebels these uh, these are houthi rebels are basically based in yemen but they are supported by iran okay so these houthi rebels were quite active over here this is your sinai peninsula okay and this is israel and gaza area so which we will discuss in some other uh, lecture but this is about your uh, you know map related to uae etc okay so i hope this is clear i have taken important uh, you know topics which can be important from your prelims point of view so with that i would like to take your leave and i'll see you in the next episode till then have a good day thank you for more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications